Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, my name is Alexandre. Uh, I'm working camp to camp. Uh, you may know me as Gurney Alex on Twitter or uh, on GitHub. I've been a software developer for the past 30 years and working with Odoo. Uh, um, sorry, uh, working with Odoo for uh, for the past 10 years. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about patterns and anti-patterns in Odoo module development because in the past 10 years I've seen lots of things, things that I liked and things that I found <laughs> awful, and I would like to uh, share that with you. So, um, code smells, that's a term that was coined by Martin Fowler uh, in the past. Uh, the idea being that if your code smells, it's like your baby's diapers, you need to change it. Okay. Um, the first code smell I've seen a lot in, uh, in Odoo source code is bloated module. Okay. It's also known as a big ball of mud. And the term was coined in 97, uh, in one of the conference, uh, the PLOP conferences. These are available at uh, Addison Wesley's. You may want to read these books. They are fairly old, but still very interesting. Uh, a real life example of bloated module is something I got from another partner who had integrated Odoo uh, for their customer, and the customer has switched to Camp to Camp. We received one module named after the customer's company name, so that's not really informative. Inside, there were 31 modules listed as dependencies in the manifest, 15,000 lines of Python code, plus 3,000 lines of Python test code, and 3,000 lines of JavaScript code, with a total of 131 models inherited and 167 new models defined in that. Okay, and of course, zero lines of documentation. So this causes brain damage, obviously. That code is absolutely unmaintainable. You have unrelated requirements implemented in the same files. You need to dig in the commit history, which we were fortunate enough to get, to try to get some information about why things are done, what things are doing. There's absolutely no structure in there, no architecture, the signal-to-noise ratio is dreadful, and you get a high probability of mixing concerns in the source code, okay? And that's also known as inappropriate intimacy in the code smells and anti-patterns literature. How can you cure that? Well, at that stage, it's very late, obviously. So you want to catch this way before that stage. Split. That's the obvious way. So try to create, to architecture your code with one module dealing with one concern, using the minimal dependencies, okay? And if you need to have things depending on many modules, you can use the auto-install feature of the Odoo framework to create blue modules to put things together and have things working together easily. Of course, provide a readme document um, for explaining what this module is about, what it's doing, what the concern is, what you want, document things, okay? Uh, you, in six months, will thank yourself for doing this when you are doing maintenance of that source code. And of course, provide tests for each module, okay? It's easier to write smaller tests when you have that because you have one concern per module, and you may want to have integration tests separately. When splitting these modules, be careful about circular dependencies because these, these won't bite you straight away, okay? But they will kill you when you try to create a new instance for, uh, your, uh, for your application from scratch. Another anti-pattern I see often is long method. Okay, long depends on your personal taste. Okay, I won't speak about the length of code lines here. I know that's a huge debate. Uh, but an example I've seen is the split productions module m m method, which is in Odoo MRP. This one comes from Odoo 15. I checked this morning. It's been refactored a bit since 16. That method is 190 lines long. It has one nested function, which fortunately enough doesn't use the uh, scope leakage from outside scope to internal scope for, uh, to work. 
It has six successive for loops, and these are obvious split points for such a method. And in these uh, sections, you get comments saying what each section is doing. And again, that's a sure sign that you want to split, and you have the clear splitting points explained for you. And inside the method, you get up to five levels of nested code structure, so that's a double for loop with a while and two ifs inside. Okay, and then the complexity of that becomes hot, and uh, you don't know all the exit points uh, of, uh, of that. And this, of course, again, causes brain damage. Uh, there are intermediate values in that that you may want to reuse, but you can't override their computation or you can't extract them from the, uh, from, from the, the function. Uh, you have the sometimes nested helper functions, which you can't extend, which you can't reuse, okay? And they may use scope leakage, meaning they can access the variables, the local variables from the method, okay? And this is cool sometimes, but it makes it hard to understand because sometimes in these long methods you have the same variable names reused for different purposes. Okay, and then if you change things, if you start calling that nested method, you'll get strange results and it's a nightmare to debug. And of course, you have a complex flow that's hard to understand, it's hard to change. Okay, and if you start having to insert many comments in your source code explaining what this section is doing, please extract that to methods, okay? And this reduces extensibility, of course, because, well, if you need to change something in the middle, you get into trouble. More on that later. The cure for that, again, if it's too long, split it. Give meaningful names to the methods that you're splitting. Choose split points smartly where you will need extension or when, where people will need extension, okay? And there's a pattern about that later in the presentation. Use, of course, non-public methods. So that's method names prefix with an underscore in the Odoo world when you extract a method. Otherwise, the method you extract becomes callable from RPC, and that can be an issue for security, for instance. So prefix your extracted method with an underscore. Avoid nested uh, helper functions. There's, that can be debatable. There are legitimate uses to nested functions, okay, but helper functions, that's a tricky one, and especially avoid, if you want to use one, avoid using the uh, leakage of scope uh, from local variables uh, to that function because, well, it makes things harder to understand and uh, can cause some really weird bugs. And we'll speak about the two-step create pattern a little bit later. Third anti-pattern I see often, too often, way too often, no call to super. Okay, uh, this example comes from the bloated module I mentioned uh, earlier. Okay, and it has these nice signature comments, start patch, end patch inside. Okay. Yeah, well, at least, at least we have the comments. <laughs> okay. Uh, why is this bad? Well, again, brain damage. Uh, the method override is done for everything. Okay. Even new module that you install will have that override and no chain of calls to super. So potentially you are breaking all the extension depending on the, the, that base method that you are completely overriding being called. Okay, and maybe it won't show up on day one of go live, but in six months, when you install that new module or that new feature, you may experience very difficult to handle bugs because the behavior will be totally different from your unit tests and in the production environment. And the worst bit, in my opinion, is that the changes in the base implementation, because Odoo code, even the stable version, is not stable. There are bug fixes coming all the time, at least during three versions. Uh, these changes are lost, and you need to manually track them and put them back in, that, uh, in the method you, override, uh, you overrode 
overrode. Um, in that uh, example here, well, you may not know it by heart, but there was at least one patch from Odoo 13 not applied in the production source code of, the, of that customer. OK, the cure. Refactor. Refactor the base method to make it extendable. Add the missing extension point that you need. OK, what if you can't? Because it's Odoo code. Make a pull request. Ping the people who wrote the method. OK, uh, be gentle, be kind to them, and uh, become maybe a best, uh, best partner, best contributor. And uh, that's, uh, that's a good way of doing it. Um, and try to fix it at the source in the proper way. If you can't do that, OK, you may try to use context injection to change the behavior of the method that is called. Okay, and to catch a context parameter later in the call uh, to, uh, to change the behavior of the method underneath that you want to change. Or call the method using super, the super implementation, update the results as a side effect after calling it. That often can work. Okay. But that's, that's probably the most difficult problem. And if you have a long method in the first place, it's, it's a hard problem. So that's also a good way of, a good reason for avoiding long methods. That's all for, I, I, I had to shorten the presentation. I, I could talk about anti-patterns for hours, okay, but I have only 20 minutes here. So let's stop uh, shooting, <laughs> okay, and provide some advice. Patterns. The first pattern you want to use is the two steps create. Two steps create is extracting a method that uh, generates, sorry, that generates the dictionary of values that you pass to create in a separate method. Okay. Each time you pass a hard-coded dictionary to, uh, to a create method, God kids kills a kitten. Okay. Don't do that. Extract that in a separate method. What you'll get, well, when to use, always, short version. Okay. You can also use that when you need to update a method. Okay. This way, you will have one clear extension point in your code. You will get people an opportunity to pass values for required fields that they are adding in their modules. Okay. And you'll get also a shorter method. The second pattern I would like to introduce is segregation by model. In Odoo, the data segregation is using segregation by model means using Odoo's ACLs and record rules to control access to some fields by moving the data that you need to control in a different model. Okay. Don't rely on view level security for that by hiding the fields because the write method and the create method and the read method are still available through RPC. So you're not protecting anything, you're just fooling yourself. And you'll get a split, which is good. You get a separate class, a separate model, and often that model will become useful by itself. Okay, so you're reducing one other anti-pattern that I didn't talk about, which is bloated class. The security rules also can be customized in the user interface of Odoo. Okay, so this becomes configuration. And you're not relying on checking in a write method or a create method what groups the user belong and hard coding that, which was the code of the no call to super method anti-pattern that I showed earlier. Why did they override? Because they needed to change the security rules which were hard coded in the uh, create method. There's also a field level access in Odoo, but that's an all of or nothing control, and you can't have, for instance, read only access to fields. So it's better to use, in my opinion, a separate model for the things you need to encapsulate. Last pattern delegate. That's probably the most useful one. 
You've been using Odoo. Maybe some of you have learned programming in Python using Odoo. And Odoo has a very inheritance-centric approach to object-oriented programming. Now, inheritance is a minor part of the benefits of, of object-oriented programming. The most useful bit of object-oriented programming is object collaboration, okay, and delegating things to another object. So when designing your modules, resist the, the urge you may have to put everything in the same class. Okay, it's easy. You have the methods, you have the data in, the, in there, you want to use it. Resist that because it leads to a bad architecture of your module. You may also want to use some other more clever things which are maybe less usual in Odoo, such as using a transient model to implement a feature. But using a transient model will make the code for a single feature in a separate class, and you can use this even if you don't have a UI for this wizard, which is not really a wizard. You can even use an abstract model, because you can instantiate abstract models in Odoo. That's weird. And the advantage is that it doesn't have a database access, so it's faster than a transient model, if you don't need any fields to be stored. And then the super next level thing is to use the OCA's component framework, okay, because that's uh, next level. I mean, I don't have time to speak about that here today, uh, but there's some literature, so you probably want to read, to, to read Gawain Baconier's Introduction to Components. You have the URL here uh, if you need it. You have the source code available on the OCA uh, repositories. And the goal is to have non-database backed up models to implement things. And it considerably simplifies the code by not having to use if, elif, elif statements depending, or switch case depending on the value of field. Uh, there are all uh, nice things to have uh, and nice gains you have through this uh, component model. I think it's time for some question and answers, if you have some. Uh, hey, uh, just a quick one. Uh, do you have any uh, examples for the patterns? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Hmm. I I'm behind the, the speakers. Uh, <laughs> do you have any examples for the patterns, like in a GitHub repo or something like that? Uh, yeah, the, the, so the patterns, yes, we have examples all over the place in Odoo because, for instance, the two steps create is widely used, not everywhere, to my greatest regret, but you'll see it in many places. Uh, the second pattern, the delegation, uh, the, there are some examples in Gawain, uh, Gawain's blog. And uh, the separate model for uh, access control. Uh, that's, I don't have an example at hand uh, in public source code. Not that I can think of, but uh, we can discuss that uh, later if you want. Uh, it, it's quite easy in the, in the principle. Thank you. Another question? No other questions? If you want to discuss that, I will be at the Chem2Chem -chem booth uh, shortly after this, uh, this, well, exiting from here. Uh, and uh, you can also reach me on Twitter uh, as uh, Gournay Alex, um, or Google my name, you should find it. There's also someone doing mountain bike, that's not me. He does crazy stuff. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.